<laughs> what are the state of those? Hello, I'm Robin Vincent and welcome to Molten Modular DIY. It's episode three. We should probably get started with some soldering. Now I had planned for my first module proper to be an oscillator. That was a plan to get stuck in with a Bifaco even VCO. But it actually seemed like a really good idea just to warm myself up to it. Because I haven't done any soldering since I did the Turing machine some little time ago now. And I wanted to get my soldering station sorted out, make sure all my stuff works, my tools are working, my bits and pieces are all coming together. So it seemed like a good idea to do something simpler. Well, Thonk sent me something simpler, and that's the Graphic EQ. It's only this bag of bits. It's not very much at all. So I figured, why don't I put that together as just a way of testing out all my gear and the camera angles to make sure everything's kind of working. And it will give you a really good example of a fabulously easy, basic, soldering project to kick off your Eurac DIY adventure. It also gives me an opportunity not to completely stuff everything up on my first build. So without further ado, the graphic EQ. Well first of all I'm going to empty my bits into something useful like, uh, hang on, there we go, oh. I'm so prepared for this. So essentially the graphic EQ consists of these lovely little LED sliders. I love these things. I like modules that had them in. I would use them in every module given the chance because you slide them and the light goes and it's just, it's a wonderful thing. I would like to design a mixer, your act mixer, full of these fellas. I think they're just the best thing. So it's uh, a bunch of these and then just a couple of jack sockets. That seems to be more or less it. Let's have a look and see what's in the black bag. So here we have the already pre-made surface mount components. Now, yeah, I know, surface mount is easy, people say. Yeah, you should do surface mount. I'm going to get to surface mount, all right? We'll get there sometime in the future, like five years or something like that. We're going to get to doing our own soldering, our own soldering you know, of surface mount bits and pieces. But I'm not there yet. I've got a fair bit of through hole to do before we get to that stage. So this is why the graphic EQ is so easy, is because all the garbage is already on the PCB. It's barely a kit at all, you're just put, kind of putting the extra appendages on. So the first thing I want to do is go and download the build instructions. Now I would do that, but I can't. There isn't a link to the manual or any download instructions on the Thonk website, even if you go to the direct link which is on the bag here. It's an empty, it's an empty folder, look. Empty folder. There's nothing there. So there aren't any build documents as far as I know. Now I could pop along to, uh, to Thonk, drop them a mail, or even get in touch with Tom Whitwell, for that matter, the guy who designed the thing, because he's very easily contactable, and I'm sure he'd send me a bit of a guide, or laugh in my face about the ridiculousness of having a guide at all. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to follow through on the customer experience. So had I been a customer, I bought one of these. I now need to find the guide to building it. There isn't one. Rat. And here it is. You know, I'm all set up. I'm ready to go. It's raining outside. I've got nothing else to do. And I want to build it. So I'm just going to have to see if I can work it out. This isn't going to be complicated. So I'm not that worried, to be honest. My biggest <laughs> concern is which way up it goes. Do I solder them on this side? Like that? Or do I solder them on the other side? Over the top of the SMDs? No, that seems stupid. I think the answer has presented itself. I'm going to solder them that way around. Ah, but which is which? Oh, it's got it written on the bottom. Has it? 10k? 10k? 
Does it matter? 10k. Okay, so all of these, as I, as far as I can see, see that here? These are all identical. Yeah, they're all B10Ks. Now on my board here, they're all covering different frequency ranges. <laughs> but does it matter? What if they're all the same? Then it doesn't matter because the frequencies must be determined by what's already on there, I assume. And all you're adding is a variable resistor which will operate in that particular frequency range. Yes. And then for the output module, so you can only go in one orientation and the input. Yeah, that's got to be it. And then on the back, because you've got the, the power outlet here, that has to go face down. So let me grab my front panel, which I have already attached to my fabulously DIY rack over there. So this is surely going to have to connect in this orientation, this orientation. So the components are going to go on the flat side, the non-surface mount side, which means I'm going to be doing the soldering on the other side, on the surface mount side. Is that making any sense to you? That seems to work. <laughs> okay. Now, if you're watching this for the first time, thinking this is a fabulous tutorial on the Graphic EQ, you would be wrong. What this actually is, is kind of my journey into DIY. So you're watching my blundering live. I haven't prepared for this. I haven't pre-done it, pre-worked it, soldered four other modules to make sure I knew what I was doing. Now this is me fudging it out in real time <laughs> as I go. So is it going to be better to do these? Can I stick them all in? Should I just do one? Would it be better to put one of these modules in? Now this, for people out there who know what they're doing, this is probably painful, painful to watch. So I could put the output and input modules on, like so. Solder those. And then that at least gives me something to work on. So the whole thing doesn't tip over quite so bad when I put one of these on. I don't know. Let's give that a go. Look, I've got those in there. So let's put that there. And then let's just solder the bugger. I mean, it can't be wrong, can it? Because it can only go in that orientation. They seem to be the same. I'm just going to go for it. Now I've got one additional tool here I didn't have before, which is this, this lovely fan, which is sticking out the side of my surface. The reason being is because I'm now using leaded solder. Oh, because everyone said I should be using leaded solder because it's much, much better. And it turns out that it's much, much better. So I'm going to be using that. But in order to save cancer and other bits and pieces, I'm just going to have a little bit of airflow blowing the smoke out of the way. Which, for some reason, I think is wise. Now, in the comments, you can tell me whether that's wise or unwise. Probably it needs to be sucking, not blowing. Who knows? I'm just trying to cover myself. Now it looks like I'm going to have to take my glasses off for this. Now these are new glasses, I don't suppose anybody noticed. But I was talking to the optician about the potential of, or the possibility of, very focals. Seems like a whole load of rubbish to me. <laughs> that seems like a nightmare. So I think I'm just going to work with them off. I might try the safety specs purely because people said I should. But I might find that too much of a hassle. But then I do like to keep my eyes. There's probably far too much talking going on. And what you really want to see is whether I actually get to solder anything. So let's try this out. See all right up there? Let's move this forward a little bit more. Now what I might do, I'm just going to reposition this camera a little bit. 
See, this is the reason why I wanted to uh, to test this out, just to get these sorts of things right. So yeah, okay, what was I doing? I was heating this fellow up here, and then I'm going to jab it with a bit of solder. Okay, patience. Patience is always good, I find. Now I do have this ridiculous magnifying glass thing over here, which I've had for years. Never really found a good use for it. Every now and again, trying to uh, straighten out pins in a CPU socket. That seems to be what this is good for. Here. Oh, I don't know. This just does funny things to my eyes. Is that any good? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Is that helpful? Let me. I've got another thing up here. Maybe it's just the flipping glasses. No, that looks pretty good to me. Let's solder the other side. Great. Now the other thing I purchased for this series ooh, rattles, is this weirdy thing here. It's a ball of sort of wire wool stuffed in a little robot head. And apparently it's far, far better than the sponge, the good old soldier iron sponge. This is far better. You jam your thing in there and it just takes the solder, the spare solder off your iron. Ooh. It seems to sort of work. Right, good. I've got an in and an out. So I should now probably populate these all the way across, or at least let's maybe we'll do one on each end. That might be a good idea. Or maybe one. Let's just do one. Let's just do one and see if I can get that to work. So I've got to get those in the right holes. Oh dear. It's been a very long day. So can I put that in any orientation that's going to work? Yeah, a bit like that. That's looking good. So a bit more solder, a bit more heat. Jam it in to those here legs. That's a bit tricky because I can't push against anything. No, that's all right. Ah. Okay, well this is currently a bit of a disaster because what's happening is I'm not quite getting my iron in to the right spot. Try it like that. And instead I'm kind of desoldering one while soldering another. High precision is what this is about, which is me all over. So you're never going to get this level of incompetence on any other YouTube channel. No, everybody else knows what they're doing. I love this little bit of silver panel here, which says rather brilliantly, this machine kills fascists. 
Yes. Excellent music, Bing. <laughs> it's a bit novelty. <laughs> the state of this. Can you witness the state of that soldering? No, probably not. Never mind. So that's one done. So this probably takes about five minutes. But of course, I'm going to drag it out. <laughs> All right, so let's take the second one in there. Well, maybe I need to do one over here, then I can balance it out. Would that make a difference? Oh, I don't know. Let's stick it in. Stick it in, stick it in, stick it in. These are all over the place. Oh, look, I've got a bent pin. What am I going to do about that? I'm going to use a pair of pliers. Just to adjust those a little bit. That's better. Now, as with most components, the legs don't necessarily line up exactly because they move about and get bent and stuff. So these are not going in there. So in order to sort that out, I'm going to have to just put a little bit of pressure on in order to bend the pins just enough to make those holes meet up. So that's not something to be afraid of. A little bit of pin bending. And actually, if the pins are under a little bit of pressure, that's going to keep it held in there that little bit better. Right, let's uh, solder that in then. Precision soldering, here we come. Oops, no, I'm not making that one happen. I don't think that middle one took. That's another big bobble. Well, ultimately, as long as it's making contact with the pad around the hole, providing those two things are actually soldered together, then it doesn't really matter that much that it's not looking like the beautiful sort of volcano mountainous thing that it should do. All right, I'm just going to jam all the rest in here now and get it done. Ooh, they're bent all over the place. <laughs> Look at the state of those. Now, the main thing that's important at this juncture is that they're all the same height so that the the top panel that's going to sit on here sits nicely on top and doesn't get silly so i want them all to be nicely down now maybe i can run along this top bit here and just solder all of those ones that might be good i'm going to try that let's go God, it's so tricky with these surface mount components they're all just really in the way. Bring this in closer. Am I using my cruncher right? Didn't come with any instructions. <laughs> I left a lot of solder behind on that fella. The possibility of me ever being able to cope with surface mount just seems so remote. There is something just thoroughly satisfying about this process. Once it starts working once the solder starts melting and you start going from pin to pin it's just it's just amazing it's like i guess it's like many hobbies you find a sort of meditation to it a kind of a zen-like state i suppose a bit like i don't know if you're painting tiny models or if you're crocheting a a blanket or knitting some socks there's the there's a rhythm to it a calmness where your brain all comes together to focus on a single thing and then you're not really thinking about it at all you're just kind of there in the moment doing it 
So probably my biggest mistake at the moment, because I'm still sort of novice level on the whole soldering, is that I use too much. Everything is kind of overly soldered. So there's a lot of solder hanging off things. I'll try to see, to see whether those are good joints or not. Well, I think what I'm going to do is assume that it's all beautiful and then I'll plug it in and see if it works. That's always a good thing to do. So with this lovely little front panel, that just sits over the top. Now I'm going to make a guess here and assume that these little screws around the plugs are going to be part of what holds it on. There's also a couple of screw holes here which go into the, the one kilohertz frequency band thingy. Oh geez Louise, <laughs> the little screws here are flathead. Flathead. Oh, who has a flathead screwdriver in this day and age? <sighs> okay. Don't over tighten, it says, so I can feel that bending slightly so I don't want to do that just want to bring it awesome I think it's done we better plug it in and see if it makes any noise so let's bring in my my awesome DIY rack my 84 HP row here so I'm going to stick this over here out of the way somewhere. Now the first thing I need to do is plug it in. Now it's got here a red stripe on the bottom and I've got a, a ribbon cable with a red stripe on one side. So that needs to go where it says red stripe. Yeah, always got to get that orientation right for reasons that everyone will be able to tell you in the comments. Just going to put that on there, red stripe. That's definitely right. That's definitely right. Then this bit, I need to plug into my floating bus cable. Somewhere over here, perhaps. And that's got a, a, a key on it. It's got a lump on it, so it can't go in the wrong way around. And I've still got the red stripe matching the red stripe going to where it says red stripe. So that should all be good. I'm going to use a couple of nerlies to secure it. Great, what a marvellous little thing. Now all I need to do is plug it in and get some sound out from something and into it to see whether it works. Right. <laughs> right, I'm going to drag some sound over from my, my usual rack, which is over here, through this thing. But first of all, let's just turn it on to see if any lights turn up. So I'm going to plug me tip-top power supply in here. I know that it's off. I'm going to avoid sticking my hands underneath and inside the circuitry. And we're just going to turn the fella on. We have lights. We have lights on the Turing machine. We have lights on the graphic EQ. Look at that lights all the way down. All the reds. Oh, yes. So that's a good indication to me that something is probably working. The next indication, of course, is going to be whether it makes any sort of noise. So let's take an output from a system and plug it into in and take that back in to something. There we go, we've got sound going through. That's awesome. So let's see what this is. I'm assuming it's boost to go that way and attenuate to go this way. So let's put everything down. Let's boost the bass.
Let's in a bit of percussion. So yeah, the music thing, graphic EQ. There you are, simple. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven bands of EQ. A bit of boost, a bit of attenuation. It's not cutting it all out to zero and it's not pumping it beyond the means of your system. It's just shaping nicely, taking tones and timbres and sort of spreading them about, giving you a little bit of boost at the bass, bringing in the top end or moving that around, shifting sound, shifting tones it's really nice it's really interesting and you couldn't have found a simpler build really i mean regardless of the fact that i had no instructions of any kind i was able to intuit my way through it because i'm a flipping genius no because it's so simple it's just seven of these things and a couple of patch cable holders sockets a couple of sockets that's all it is Soldering's a little bit fiddly in there because you've got to get around the surface mount bit. So it's a good practice of getting your soldering steady and right and having the confidence just to know kind of what you're doing. But really, it's a brilliant little project for anyone who just wants to kick something off. And at the end of it, you get this, this really nice little module. <laughs> it's quite groovy. It definitely gives you something to add to the tone of your sound. Yeah, nice. Now, funnily enough, a week on Saturday, the 15th of September, 2018, so I'm sorry you would have missed it if you've watched it after that date, but on Saturday, the 15th of September, there's a little workshop that Thonk are doing down in Brighton on this very module. You can go along and it'll be run by Tom Whitwell, the guy who designed the thing, the guy who also designed the Turing machine and other bits and pieces. You know, marvellous little modules he's your man and he'll be taking you through your very first build of the graphic eq it's phenomenal it's a beginner's class it's for people who've never picked up a soldier knife before in their life and would like to have a go it's a workshop it's a seminar you'll learn all sorts of really cool stuff about how modules are put together and the thought processes and concepts behind it as well as spending a bit of time putting the thing together so that sounds like a fabulous afternoon to me so coming up next, I will have the building of the Bifaco Even VCO. I'm going to get stuck into that probably next week. We shall see. And it's only going to get harder from here, I imagine. But that seemed to work okay. Please let me know in the comments what you thought about the camera, the exposure, the focusing, or issues or other bits and bobs that I could improve upon in order to get this to work best on video. Please keep throwing in your soldering tips and your other tips and bits and pieces because you know I love reading those. I really do. I need the encouragement. And if you found this interesting and, and, and useful or an encouragement or maybe even an inspiration, then do consider subscribing, sharing the video, or even throw me a couple of dollars on Patreon, which would be awesome. You'd be joining me on this journey into the unknown of DIY. And that would make the whole thing that bit more special. But that'll do. The graphic EQ took about 20 minutes with a bit of mucking about in the middle. And in the meantime, Go make some modules, or some music, or something. <laughs> <laughs>